Ja. Okay. Millennium 2000 is upon us Still we sit around with a fuss Arise indigenous people Sarawama, Garinabu, Sarawama Sarawama, Nida, Yewenedu Sarawama, Garinabu, Sarawama Chilu, Hada, Nidumeyo the time is now, Garinabu. Sarawama, Garinabu, Sarawama. Wake up, Garinabu, Sarawama. Wake up, Sarawama. Yes, ladies and gentlemen out there, welcome to the Radio Domore. And today, we, who we have, we got Egbert Elino. We have Bill Flores from Los Angeles. We have Jason Guerrero from Pennsylvania. And we have... The one and only Wellington Ramos from New York. And um, before we start, I want you guys to watch this little video clip about the Maya land. Okay? There is a standing consent order from the Caribbean Court of Justice that affirms the rights of the Maya people to their ancestral lands and territories here in southern Belize. We have, um, in the recent weeks, seen an escalation of illegal activities on Maya land, uh, which is, in our opinion... Uh, blatant disregard for yeah, the rights it. of the Maya people and the rule of law. It was very clear in the Caribbean oh, Court of Justice well, consent I'm, I'm, order, sorry about us, in, in particular I'm paragraph there, uh, 4, uh, which Joseph, uh, tells the government of Belize to seize and abstain from any acts, whether by the agents of the state itself or by third parties acting with its leave, acquiescence, or tolerance that might adversely affect the value, the use, and the enjoyment of the lands that are used and occupied by our Maya villages, unless such acts are preceded by through prior informed consent obtained from the affected communities. Now, we have received a, a number of complaints from different villages in the Toledo district where they have reported to our offices that there is an increase of surveyors on their lands opening up survey lines without the consent of the Maya communities that are being affected. Whenever the leaders request and inquire about where the authority has come from for these surveying, um, we, we see in bits and pieces of information that these surveying are permitted by the Lands and Survey Department, particularly the Commissioner of Lands and Survey. That is very, very um, concerning to us here in the Maya communities because we are cognizant of the fact that we've been reassured time and time again by the Toledo Maya Land Rights Commission that all government departments, all CEOs, all uh, government entities that have an engagement with the Maya communities have been informed and are aware that there is a standing consent order that affirms our rights and that Text ancestral rights to lands and territories. All right, all right, ladies and gentlemen. Again, now we have Egbert Eginio from San Jose, California. Bill Flores from Los Angeles, California. We have uh, Saint Simon, when this is on uh, Radio Dumuri, and we have Wellington Ramos from New York, and not, no other than Joseph Guerrero. From Pennsylvania. Good night, you guys. Good evening. Or in LA is what three o'clock, three thirty. How you guys doing? <laughs> yeah. You doing good. I'm good. Mr. Bill, we're doing fine. Yeah, I'm doing okay. Uh, I'll be better after the elections. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's. We today we the talk is uh we still on the Garrison lands, right? Yes, yes, and, and um, our listeners, you know, today we, we are trying something new, um, you know, using uh, Messenger 
different format, so we, you know, a little bit of delay here and there. But um, I'm president of uh, Garifuna Nation, and as uh, Seng Su man uh, done in the introductions, introducing you to officers of the Garifuna Nation, Wellington Ramos, Bill Flores, and Joseph Guerrero. And Seng Su man is uh, helping us with the technology because, you know, some of us are very, you know, challenged by this um, new new system, technology, uh, the new way of um, you know, you know, communicating, which is, uh, you know, this technology for me is a little challenging. However, you know, thank God for people like Tim Man who, who know what they're doing in the, in the, in the, the back end. I, I like that you introduce this discussion by featuring the video on the Mayans, the indigenous Mayans of uh, Southern Belize. Um, making the case to the public that there has been what I want to describe a level of lawlessness a level of lawlessness that continues to be perpetrated by the administrators of our government and now I want to be like more direct by saying there seems to be a certain um, you know, um, commitment to be lawless by some public officers in is who using our tax dollars to perpetrate their own private gains. They are in a public office, you know, aiming to um, gain a... private. Profits there is a using standing public order funds. In a nutshell, that's what it is. And it is very annoying, right, for these administrators to go into Punta Gorda, indigenous lands, and do as they please. From my position as a, you know, um, a leader of the Garifuna Nation, I reach out and send, you know, a, a, a hand of solidarity with our brothers, the indigenous people of Maya, to keep that fight, keep the good fight, be vigilant, and to keep us informed of the lawlessness that our government is perpetrating. Because they have no right to be doing that. You know, there are conventions, there are international treaties, there are international conventions, and our constitution should not go awry, you know, of the precedents that have been set by convention. And this is what we want to talk about today. We want to hammer in. We want to, you know, send a message that there are laws that protect indigenous people like the Mayans and indigenous people, our people, the Garifuna. I want to start with that and I'll ask my other brothers to uh, introduce themselves and then take a strand of the discussion their way okay i uh, this is joseph guerrero um but i very hi guys the panelists and i want to say a great big hello to the audience the listening audience on this show what we want to do is we want to help ourselves understand the dynamics of the land laws in belize for indigenous people that we have a right to own land collectively that the government has no right to then title and sell to because you already own the land. And this is the reason that first video that uh, you just saw where Christina Co uh, Maya Leaders Alliance, I believe, um, she is explaining that the government is in their land doing or performing these surveys on their land without their permission and they give others permission to survey in Maya land where they the government is already under a cease and desist order from Judge Conte as you heard uh, Ms. Koch mentioned in the video for the government to stop using Maya land if, if, if the, and that meant and she further said that this is includes the government or any third party 
and it also said that the government must stop registering uh, land their lands in other people's names and this has been happening in Garifuna land and we Garinago have never done a single thing about it now what we're talking about what Miss Cork was talking about is what you call land tenure or ownership and uh, what the government does when it gives a title is it convey is land conveyance when you give a title that's land conveyance so let's get familiar with those terms okay so land tenure is ownership of the land conveyance is then taking land that someone owns in private title and sells or sells the land and sell the title to someone else that's land conveyance so the uh, the government has been doing this in Garifuna land but here's the thing the government is selling Garifuna land to Garifuna that doesn't make sense and we keep paying for it in Hopkins there is an issue where I know personally where uh, the government charging about 20,000 for a lot and the land is owned by Garinago who in Hopkins can buy a $20,000 lot and it's their land. This is not making sense. So we're going to uh, talk more today about land conveyance and land tenures, tenureship. Okay, Bill? Uh, yes. Good afternoon and greetings from Los Angeles. I'm glad you decided to spend a little time with us and to learn something uh, about this unique culture that's known as Garifuna. Um, if, if we are to survive... Uh, as a people uh then there must be a central location there, there there must be a location that we can identify as garifuna land this is where the garinagu live this is the home of the garifuna people and and but the, the lands that were that the, the, that's our lands the, the land that we traditionally occupy and use it's been sold from under us daily uh, because of the illegal action of the government of police, uh, defying uh, the, the judge's order, the, the, the order that Judge Kante made uh, in the so-called Maya land rights case, when it's actually the, it's the land rights case for indigenous people. Now, we, we, now, what's come to mind now, what the reality is in our land is that we have been effectively priced out of our land. We, Garinago, as Joe mentioned about the, the one incident in Hopkins, uh, uh, we, we are not able to compete with other, with, uh, for our land ownership, for our land, for not ownership, for our land purchase, to purchase our own land. And we are, we are priced out. Now, if we are priced out of our land, then there's no Garifuna, because when we speak of Garifuna culture, a part of our culture also includes land, which is a very important aspect of our culture. And if we lose this as aspect of our culture, it's like losing our language. It's like losing our beloved Garifuna duo. It's like, lose, it's, it's like losing everything. So without land, there is no Garifuna. Wellington? I want to go back into history to talk about ownership to land and rights. Before the Europeans came to this part of the world, indigenous people lived on these lands for centuries. They came in with brute force, colonized these territories, and they took away the lands from the indigenous people, and then turned around and made it crown land, and then Whoever were left, most of those people were killed, by the way. They removed them off their land to issue title to those lands. Well, anything that is obtained through an unlawful purpose, whatever document you obtain for that, that property or land, occupation, where you occupy the land, you administrate it, you develop it, and then you will be given rights to ownership, foreclosing. Remember that the Myers got a ruling in the Belize Supreme Court and the government fought the Myers in the appellate court 
and the Mayans went all the way to the Caribbean Court of Justice and they had the, the uh, Conte ruling sustained. That means the judgment is good as go. You know what the government told them, right? That we are going to form a working commission committee to work with you so that we could abide by a court judgment. But here we can see clearly that the UDP government and the PUP government, they have no intentions of giving the Mayans anything. They're just making false promises. And this act that they just committed is in violation of the Kante ruling and the CCJ ruling. Thank you. Thank you, brother Wellington Ramos. Thank you for that historical overview. And I want to tell the audience our position as indigenous people of the Caribbean. After all, we were referred to as Black Arabs, but we don't go by that. We go by Garifuna. We are indigenous. And you young people who are having difficulty with you know the definition of these words, just go Google it. Google indigenous. And when you finish, Google United Nations ILO 169. Because it is clearly stated that by international law that indigenous people have a special right to what was stolen. This is what Brother Wellington Ramos is referring to, what was stolen from us in Yurume. And some of our leaders, you know, I guess, um, you know, the Garifuna people are nice people, all right? But there are times when we, we shouldn't be so nice as to tell the world that we weren't just moved out of um, Yurume, now called St. Vincent. We were genocide. We were genocide by the British. You know what genocide means? Deliberate killing, murdering, all right? Because we were not as strong as them at that time, even though we resisted for over 30 years. They genocide us on the, on the, on the, the island of Palisau starved 2,500 people under the disguise of so-called civilization. All right, move us from the Caribbean, Saint Vincent and the other islands, because history shows that Satie didn't just occupy Saint Vincent; he had a whole civilization going with in Saint Lucia, Grenada, Dominica, and a few other islands around. <laughs> took a took away our turn territory put us in honduras actually not put us dumped us there you know because we were young know, um, we'll call it uh soldiers of uh prison prison yeah soldiers yeah, prisoners of war and the british were fighting the spanish so why would they dump us there we were dumped like cannon father right that was 1796 and look at the years 1796, we left, they took us away from St. Vincent, Yurume. 1797, we are in Honduras. Three years later, there's records to show that by 1801, we are already in no man's land that is now claimed Belize from the Cebu to the Stars Tune. Because there was this law, the sunset, the sunrise law, when we were not allowed to be in the part they call Belize. So the Sibun to Sarstoon, from Sibun to Sarstoon, is ours. We occupy that there too. According to, we have title entitlement according to the United Nations ILO 169. I will not give up on that. I think that Brother Bill has the, um, the uh, preamble to the um, ILO 169 especially one and two, so that our listeners could hear that this is a working document from the United Nations. Bill, you want to read it for us? Yes. Uh, okay. I, the, okay. The, the preamble uh, to the ILO 169, which is the Indigenous and Tribal Peoples Convention, uh, it said, the General Conference, Conference of the International Labor Organization, having been convened at Genoa uh, by governing body of the Inter International Labor Office and have met 
in its 76th session on 7 June 89. Noting that international standards contained in the Indigenous and Tribal Populations Convention and Recommendation, recalling terms of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights, the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, and many international instruments on the prevention of discrimination and considering that all developments which have taken place in international law since 1959, as well as developments in the situation of indigenous tribal peoples in all regions of the world, have made it appropriate to adapt new international standards on the subject which view to removing the assimilation and orientation of the earlier standards. Now, the, the, the preamble is, is, is just setting up uh, um, what they'll talk about in specifics uh, when, when they, they go into the articles. Yes. But for the, for the purpose of our show today, I would just like to, to, to jump to, uh, to Article 14 yes. and quickly. Say, the rights of ownership and possession of the people concerned over the lands which they traditionally occupy shall be recognized. In addition, measures shall be taken in appropriate cases to safeguard the right of the people's concern to the use of land not exclusively occupied by them. Very important. Yes. Not exclusively occupied by them. Exactly. But, but to which they have traditionally have access for the, for the subsistence and traditional activities. Particular attention shall be paid to the situation of of nomadic peoples and shifting cult cultivators in this aspect. The governments shall take steps as necessary to identify the lands which the peoples constitutionally occupy and a guarantee effective protection of their rights of ownership and possession. Now, that was just a part yeah. of Article 14. Now, reading that and having, having uh, looked at Judge Kante's decision, it's almost word for word. Yes. You know, so, so, just, so all we, uh, yeah, so what we have to do, what we have to do since we, since we uh, refuse the opportunity to be plaintiffs in the Mile and Rights case, uh, and the LGC, you know, refused to participate in that uh, because they, they went on the side of, oh, the government is going to develop the South, uh, which, which we know now is a pipe dream. Yeah. So uh, and and the difference is and, and proof that this is our territory. The British didn't come to this part of what is now Belize. Yes, from the Shibun to the Sarasun, the, the, the British did not occupy that for for years and years. And also there were treaties, right? There were treaties. I think either Wellington or our brother um, Joseph, Joseph could. Um, you know, elaborate on those treaties that were signed between, you know, our forefathers, our ancestors, and they went to court for their property. Now, we Garena are kind of strange in that light. We are actually buying property we own already from the government. This does not make sense to me. I'm still trying to make sense of why we insist on buying land from a government that cannot sell the land that we're buying. And yet we keep doing it. You see, the government, remember I said we were going to talk about land tenure. Yes. That is, how do you get to own this land? You get to own the land by land conveyance. Now, Bill, while I'm talking, will you please look on the ILO 169 that tell about uh, land ownership and who has the right to uh, uh, sell those lands or whatever in the ILO 169, please. And I'll continue talking. When you get it, Bill, just interrupt. Okay. <clears throat> so now the idea of land tenure or ownership, it comes through land conveyance. According to Judge Conte's ruling, we indigenous people had rights to the land before the border moved to Boon to the Sarstone. Now, for those of us who don't know, because there are many people who are not who who are not versed in the history of, of Belize, uh, Brother Egbert. So, 
between the Sabon and the Sarstone that we keep talking about is where you'll find Stan Creek District and Toledo District. Yes. Okay, and part of Car. I just and want people to understand that and the, my, all that stuff. Yeah. So now that we understand that between the Sabon and the Sarstone is where the Garena go were kept away from the um, from the colony or the settlement. Yeah. We which don't want to leave out the keys the too, brother Joseph. And we the don't keys, want to leave out the keys. And the keys. <clears throat> All that stuff, All right. my brother. All right, Joe. Okay, uh, go ahead, Bill. Tell us what it says. It, it says here, it's Article 15. It said, the rights of the people's concern to the natural resources pertaining to their lands shall be specially safeguarded. Those rights include the right of these peoples to participate in the use, management, and conservation of these resources. In cases in which the state retains the ownership of mineral or subsurface resources or rights to other resources pertaining to lands, governments shall establish or maintain procedure through which they shall consult these people okay. with a view of ascertaining whether and to what degree their interests would be, would, would be prejudiced before undertaking or permitting any programs for the exploration or exploitation of such resources pertaining to their lands. The people concerned shall, shall whether, uh, shall, shall wh wherever possible participate in the benefits of such activities and shall receive fair compensation for any damages which may sustain as a result of activities. But then let's make this one part. Mm -hmm. uh, say uh, uh, where the relocation of these people is considered necessary as as an exceptional measure such relocation shall take place only with their free informed consent where their where their consent cannot be obtained such relocation shall take place only following appropriate procedures established by international by national law and regulations including public inquiries with appropriate, which provides the opportunity for for effective representation of the people's concern. Okay, let me let me um, uh, highlight uh, what you said uh, earlier in the um, article, Bill, where it talks about the uh -huh. use of the resource. Okay, now people, when right. you say resource, mm -hmm. let, let's make sure our people understand this. People might think, oh, it might think the the fruits or the animals or the the, the gold or the water and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. but they're also coming from the most important resource which is the land itself okay right. the land is a resource and now it says that they have rights to the use people might think oh oh well we have right to use it but we don't have right to own it no a part of using land the right to use the land in belize in most states is also the right to the title to it Mm -hmm. So you have a right to the title. So you can use the land as you have been doing before the settlement moved from Sibun River to the Sarstoon River. When it moved from the Sibun to the Sarstoon River, then it included Garinago. Before that, Garinago were not a part of what was then come to call Belize. So even in 1834, when we reached there in the book, in, or 1823, Wellington will go over that. When we reach, uh, those people came to what is today called Belize. What is today? It wasn't Belize back then. But in the history books, they're going to tell you they came to Belize in 18, this, 80, whatever it is. As I said, Wellington will give us the, those, those things. And then they said, Belize, welcome. Belize didn't welcome us because that wasn't a part of Belize. The order from the governor of Jamaica at the time, and Wellington can also tell us when we got our own governor, but the order of the governor from Jamaica at the time was to keep the Caribs south of the Sabon, man. Mm -hmm. This is real history. This is the real history, not this romantic nonsense that they're teaching our children in the school. That's nonsense that Belizeans came, oh, and let's beg this man so he can stay. Oh, please beg us in the straw hat and so on and so forth with our three-quarter pants and so on. Please. <laughs> I don't know if, 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 if Wellington or, or Bill or, or Egbert, one of you guys did that. I, but I didn't. I didn't. Right? So, so, so I, I want us to understand uh, that the history 
that we are being taught in school is nonsense. Yes. 100%. Let yes. me give this to Brother Wellington to, to, to straighten out the history for us. Well, well I want to, there are a couple of points here. One is that when a convention is signed, like this convention, it is a treaty. And once a nation signed that agreement, they have up to 10 years to go into their National Assembly and make laws to back up the agreement. Now, interestingly, Belize did not legislate anything to back up this treaty. Honduras, Nicaragua, Belize, Guatemala, St. Vincent, none of them legislated anything. So, from the mere fact you, didn't, you sign a treaty, you not abided by the, the tenets of the treaty, you don't intend to do anything. And when Bill was reading what he was reading, oil was discovered in that area between Barranco and a group of Maya villages. The government went ahead and they formed and they gave a contract to an American company, to two American companies to drill oil. They never consulted the Garibna people. They never consulted the Maya people. And in fact, what the Musa administration did, they formed a company called the Belize National Energy. The family was on board and they were the one issuing license for the drilling of oil in Belize. And the royalties from the, that drilling up to this day, we do not know how much royalties was obtained, money went, but this is what we do know. The people in Barranco and the Maya villages, they had pollution, dust pollution. They had other things that they have to suffer from, from the oil drilling, and they haven't been compensated yet. And one last point. You see the same ILO 169? Some of the things that are in the ILO 169, the Belize government came the other day, they took out some stuff out of it, and they wanted to present the Equal Opportunity Bill. And in that same bill, they had a tribunal court that was going to have more power than the Supreme Court of Belize. Look, these people don't have no respect for law, my brother. These people are lawless. They don't, no document they sign, no constitution they read. They do as they please. And right now, they're giving away the Maya land as we speak. Election ploy. But the Thank Mayans, you. the Mayans, they knew something. Because, you know, in teach that the indigenous people in Belize are only Mayans. That's what I went to school. And that's what they were teaching in Belize, that the Mayans own Belize. No, the Mayans, they probably consulted international lawyers. And the lawyers probably told the Mayans, you know something? You can't take this case to an international court unless you include the Garifuna people because the effective occupation clause is going to come up. And you all did not effectively occupy this region until a certain time. So, the right safest way to do this is to bring the Garifuna with you guys and then you sue. So they brought in the Garifuna into the case. It was we that declined not to go with the Myers. But we had the opportunity because they us to go with them but still we were lucky that the judge granted us our rights in that ruling yes the the national garifuna council is the recognized group legal group to the government of belize through their mou so garifuna but the national garifuna council refused to garifuna did not okay i want to make that clear because well, they're not going well, I'm not going to be the 
Saint Simon, you gotta mute. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Saint Simon, you gotta mute. Yeah, go ahead. Mute. All right. So, um, I I wanted to go over that one more time because apparently a few Garifuna brothers and sisters I've been talking to want to know why is it that the Garifuna, the indigenous Garifuna, decided not to go along with the Mayan indigenous, the indigenous Maya, to contest court. Okay. And then I also want to question uh -huh. the legality of the <laughs> National Council. I don't have the legality. What does that MOU look like? What does that MOU with the administration look like? That the NGC, as a private entity, is going to represent a, a few Garifuna? Or is this private NGC entity representative of the 30,000 or so Garifuna in terms of this land right well, issue? Uh, that, now, that's the question, you see. Because if you, me, or anybody who is listening to NGC bylaws are, in order for you to really be Garifuna and be represented by the NGC, you have to pay your dues. You have to be in good standing. You have to do what their bylaw says, which you have to sign an application. Until you sign the application, really and truly, you are not recognized as Garifuna legally by the government who deals with the NGC. Let me say that again. Yeah. Until you sign that document that you join the National Garifuna Council, you are not really Garifuna legally in the government's eyes. Because the government only recognizes the NGC as of the Garifuna people. And to be a part of the NGC and be represented by them, you must sign the paper that they have and register with them. So that would mean 99.99% .99 of the Garifuna going Belize are not a part of NGC. Represented. <clears throat> They're not represented, no. But the ones who signed up with them, they are represented. And that's the, in the NGC's bylaws. You see, the government has a MOU with the NGC, which is a memorandum of understanding, an agreement. And, if, and the government, the NGC is an organization that is registered in Belize. And as a part of the registration, it has submitted... It's um, that says how people are part of an NGC and who is a part of NGC. These are legal legal documents. So people who defend what the NGC uh, the, uh, has done, they don't realize that the NGC does not represent their interests. The NGC only is the interests of its members with the government. And that's all the government recognizes. We have so to I get see. sober. So, so, um, so uh, the NGC, right, with both governments, POP and UDP, mm -hmm. had gone ahead and demarked over a hundred thousand acres of land and keys. Mm -hmm. So, what it does seem to me is that this hundred is about to be, um, you know, mm -hmm. shared among these. Uh, you know, elite members of the National Garifuna Council. That is what seems to be coming down the pipe, isn't it? Well, the, the most tragic thing I see uh, coming down the pipe is that Garifuna, uh, through the NGC, lost so much when the National Garifuna Council refused to join the fight for collective land rights for Garifuna. That's how you empower people. You have to have your land. As a result, a direct result, that the National Garifuna Council did not claim the lands, the Garifuna lands. And even if they claim the land, you won't get any unless you join the NGC. Even if they claim the land... It is good, you know, and perhaps dandy for the United Nations uh, UNESCO branch of uh, the UN, the UNESCO, to proclaim um, Garifuna and sang and music as, you know, a uh, heritage that is intangible. Um, but how can the intangibles, right, survive without, you know, the ownership of land, 
you know, um, the ownership of the sea, you know, and, and entitlement to, to use of the the resources on these lands. Right, Bill? Yes, yes. And I interestingly, um, the this Maya land rights case uh, took place during the Musa administration. And um, as if by ironic faith, the permanent secretary was Gurkhan. So if, well, if anybody was aware of what was happening in the government and the Maya land rights case, it would have to be the permanent secretary. Yeah, it would be good so, to uh, uh, find out what that permanent secretary knew. Uh, when you mention uh, Musa, I, I find it ironic that uh, after he sold the jetty pier to one of his, you know, minions, uh, he was very excited to write a letter ar along with uh, Roy Cayetano, Asad Schumann, condemning the uh, atrocities in Honduras, when perhaps he should have uh, started with his own house yeah. in, the, in, in the Belizean government. But Wellington, um, how do you how do you see this uh, moving forward? The buckle that we are in, uh, the Garifuna people have given up their collective rights. Um, some of them have even perhaps given up their own rights as indigenous people, because you know, um, to a large extent, it might be because we are just totally, you know, they are just totally ignorant. It, it is not being taught in the schools. You know, it's not taught in the primary schools. It's not taught in you know, secondary schools is not taught in, you know, it's not part of the curriculum for the six farmers, apparently, not even at the undergraduate level. So how do we bring our masses to understand what it is, you know, to be indigenous, what it is to to manage your own resources, what it is to, to have a different perspective that is different from the European model, the European model that have us in this total, you know, state of lawlessness. <laughs> well... Based on what I'm hearing now, there are a couple of questions. Is the National Governor Council the true legal representative for all the Governor people in this in, in Belize? That's a question. And if they are, what are the process and processes that they use in order to represent all the Garifuna people in the league. To come to that conclusion, you have to look at their bylaws and their constitution and see how they elect people to be members of the National Garifuna Council. And one thing I must tell you clearly, if all the Garifuna people in Belize are not given the opportunity to participate in this exercise, then they cannot be a legal representative for all the Garifuna people. Because even a dues that you put in a legal court could be considered to be a poll tax, which will deny certain Garifuna people who cannot afford that dues to be a member of the National Garifuna Council. That's these are questions. And the other question is how in the world the government of Belize, whether it be PUP or UDP, can enter into an agreement with a Garifuna organization that is not granting due process to its own citizens because that is in itself is going to be in violation of the constitution of Belize. Because the Garifuna people should be given the opportunity to be a member of the National Garifuna Council if they want to be a true representative body of all the Garifuna people in Belize. We have to look at their election process. Do they give notices? Who are the people? How long they serve? And who? There are a lot of questions here to be asked and to be answered. And if these questions are not answered, then they will not pass the test to be a true representative of all the Garifuna people in Belize. Uh, I, I think um, following those lines, I think that uh, that representation could be contested. All right, If the populace uh, in Belize, let's say, 
are unhappy no. with this entity, right? Even though they have a memorandum of understanding, the majority, if there is a toss up, say between the Garifuna Nation and the National Garifuna Council, in terms of, uh, you know, um, identity, what, what does the populace want, who with which group does the populace want to identify with? The National Garifuna Council or the Garifuna Nation? I think but, there, but, there might be a process for that, isn't it? Edward, let me say something here. Uh, in the National Governor Council, in their MOU, it stated that that they are just one of Governor representatives in Belize. They they didn't say that they are the. They said they are one of the representatives in, in Belize. But it turned out that they are the only ones. Now the concerns that Wellington brought up about their election process. And, and and who and and who is allowed to to participate now that that is an interesting question because the, the election process of the ngc is less than democratic it is not democratic as a matter of fact if 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 you were not endorsed by the upper echelon of ngc for studies you can run for office good so i guess we we, we would like to explore that a little bit more i want to go back Thank you for telling me that, Bill. And I want to study mm -hmm. that uh, constitution uh, of the NGC a little closer. I've heard Hi. some rumors. Um, and I'd I like to bring it up and, and put it up here for members. But Joseph, let's go back to... Lance yeah, here. the balance is only one page. Okay, <laughs> okay go ahead. Jo go ahead. Joseph, uh, in terms okay. of let's the rights okay. and use and management, mm -hmm. I want to tell my listeners that, that there are several models for collective ownership, right? And collective mm -hmm. tenure. I mean... We don't have to like elaborate the point that the Mennonites that the government you know went into agreement with and there are models too like the Native Americans in the US who are who manage the the use and enjoyment of the of the land through taxes and joint exploration and the and the and the processes and the minerals that are found could you speak to that a little bit Joseph um well a bill uh, uh, quoted for us the law uh, from the ILO 169 convention and it says that we have a right to a share in the minerals now the minerals uh, or say the resources that can be well uh, uh, cause wealth for the nation such as the or or you know, if they find gold or if they find minerals or some you know where precious metal let's say uh, it's for the, it, yes, it's considered for the nation, but the people who own the land must get a share yes. in, in, in that, and that you can negotiate with the government. So, yeah, Belize law does provide for that to be resolved. That, that can be resolved, but before we even get there, we need to own, uh, or take, uh, and get the title to the land. That's our weakness. That's Garifuna number one weakness. We do not have the um, collective title for the land that we own, and we are not practicing autonomy. As uh, you know, once you own the collective the land collectively, then you can practice autonomy. Autonomy is where we can save Garifuna Duel, which is uh, what everyone is concerned about: the dying of Garifuna Duel. Well, it's dying because we don't control our own destiny. Yes. If we continue to depend on the government ministries to do things for us, guess what? None of the ministries of the government know a darn thing about Garifuna Dull. So yes. how can they serve it? So if they don't know anything about it, then let us who know it, let us organize ourselves so that we can perpetuate the culture, beginning with perpetuating the family structure. Very good. Very good. And Joe, and Joe. While yeah. the Garifuna and the Mayas are not getting any royalties from the oil, the Mennonites from oil, and they are living pretty good in Spanish lookout. As a matter of fact, oil in Spanish lookout is a lot cheaper than if you go into the Belize market. Gas is cheaper too. Yes, but, uh, need as to, far as I know, as far as I know, they have done oil exploration in the south, where the indigenous people are. 
um, as uh, and also as far as I know, there hasn't been any fine uh, any commercial quantities strike yet. Uh, I think they they know that it's there, but they have not struck it yet. That, that that's how I see it. But I think that before they even do that, the government should should have an agreement with the indigenous people. But remind, let me remind you guys again. If Garifuna do not claim their land, we cannot claim the oil either. That's right. It's important that we understand this. There is no way around uh, claiming uh, our rights if we want the benefits of it. You cannot say, we can't say let everybody live in harmony as one and think you're going to go claim indigenous rights because everybody who's there are not indigenous, so you can't claim it. You cannot claim it. It's no different from living in Belize City. It's no different from living in Corazon or in Dua, where you have uh, uh, people who are of the, the wider um, uh, culture, and they don't have this distinct culture. They don't think family, language, religion, ways, and how they, how they interact with the land. They don't have those ways. We do. And the only way we can claim it is by being Karinago. We have to claim our rights, but you can't say we claim our rights and everybody will get along and everybody and get a piece because they weren't there. You understand? If they weren't there in 1801 or in 1798, then they don't have the right. That's what I'm saying. They don't have the right. You see? Only Garifuna have the right. It's not being mean. It's not being selfish or anything like that. Like we would tend to think because we're so, we're so, um, uh, kumbaya alike. But no, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is if they weren't there with us when we arrived, then they don't have the rights. And that's not me. That's the law. Yes. That's the reason why. You People never understood why I was advocating that Garifuna own everything when there are different people now. In fact, Garinago are so selfless that we will lose our language so that we can talk the language of the few people who live among us. And I think we need to relook that. We, you know, take another look at that that value that we have. Yes, Joe. I think even like, for example, we are supposedly the the people's concern shall be consulted whenever consideration is being given to their capacity to alienate their land or otherwise transmit their rights outside of their community. Persons not belonging to these people shall be prevented from taking advantage of their customs or of lack of understanding of the laws or a part of their members to secure the ownership possession or use of land belonging to them and joe and bill that's very important we call that jurisdiction you can yes. own land but you must have jurisdiction over the land the, the millionaires they have jurisdiction believe that you can't go to no Mennonite community as a police officer and do as you please. You have to talk to the minister because every Mennonite community is run by a minister. They call him a minister. You can even, like, if they do something there, that minister can try a uh, court and decide what the punishment will be for that Mennonite. They have a lot of right. powers in the community. Mm -hmm. We, the government, the police, the BDF, they can come into our community, arrest anybody, do as they please, and nothing is done to them. We have no jurisdiction. Yes, we, 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 Joe and I have gotten... We, good. we actually do. We, Go ahead. We, had, we, we have gotten in trouble for saying that that, that, that town board is an illegal, is an illegal body that, that, that administers Dangriga. Yeah, well, we're going to change that. This is what the Garishna Nation is all about, to rewrite the history right from the position of liberation you know we cannot use the colonial model you know to address our rights because what the english and the spanish did was to come and disrupt totally disrupt our livelihood in the caribbean and then when we got here to the mainland you know they kind of coerced a few of us, a few of our leaders, to adopt their model of development. And you notice their model of development has totally devastated, continued to devastate our, our culture. It's, it's just because we are so resilient, right? We are so resistant 
that we have been able to contain our culture and our identity. And that's why I have to say sometimes, you know, we are the best people. Because look at how much we do. With so little. They steal from us. You know, they rape our women when no. they feel like. They, co they, mm -hmm. come in, they come into our community, you know, and give us bogus democracy, democratic systems. And all we are asking them at this moment, perhaps for the next couple of years, guys, I'm getting impatient. You know what I mean, Bill? I'm getting impatient. We will take them to the court. We will tell them, listen, be, be human beings. Listen, we could work this out amicably. There's a court system and Wellington, you know, San Pedro and Belmopan that have their council running with surplus money. All the other districts, these town boards, they're running in the red. They are over $185,000 behind their budget. They yeah, don't have no money. They broke. They broke. Yeah. That's because of the centralized, you know, centralized system, system. of government. Same. So, man, do you have any commentary? And it seems that there are all these, um, people might say there are all these, you know, groups and strands, people, you know, fighting for their rights. We have to fight for our rights as indigenous people because this is how we make the democracy works. Democracy is not given. We got to forever be vigilant. I, Wellington, brother, Wellington mentioned the uh, equal opportunity bill that was being advocated by a certain group um, in Belize. Well, if they want the equal rights to Garifuna, Indigenous Garifuna also want equal rights, just as the equal rights that is being you know, advocated for by the, the indigenous Maya, whom we support. We will give solidarity formally. And we too, from the Garifuna Nation, we're in the process of you know getting a legal team going so that we can be very present in the process of this uh, advocating for this land right in, in Belize. Brother Joe? Okay, Egbert, you know, uh, we talk sometimes as if though the government is doing all these things, and yes. they are to a certain extent. But you see, <clears throat> we as Garinago, we have never ever challenged the government for violating our rights. Yes. And unless we do, no, the government won't say, oh, we're violating the rights of these people, let's stop. That's not going to happen. We have to get the courts involved. And there is no way anything will change until we get the courts involved. This Good. arena go must learn. There's no way around it. We must well, I think, uh, go. We, 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 we move. I think we move to the nation. Bill? We, we have to be aware uh, that freedom is never given. You know, it must be demanded and taken. You, you know, you have to treat it like you know it belongs to you. you do the same way we feel at all because we know that it, it belongs to us. And, and the laws uh, of Belize, the laws of the Caribbean and international law. Yes. So all we, all we have to do is access uh, uh, access those venues to 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 reclaim our land. Question: Why is our leadership not attempting to do that? I want to answer that question because I might know Katie. You know, and I too, I'm tired of you know seeing our land and people coming up to me and complaining about all this big farmer just bulldozed his place and took it over, you know, people coming complaining to me that they have to look for some minister who is traveling to Japan to sign some paper for him or her just to get a piece of lot. And when they get a piece of lot, it's in a bingham piece of swamp. You know, I'm tired of seeing people having to build in swamp where, where the government is giving the nice, the, the choicest piece of our places to some foreigner. I'm tired of seeing that. Now they don't know anything about culture. So we need our land. We need our land so we could promote Garifna Duo. They don't know what Garifna Duo, they might only know how to spell it, if that is what they do. So yes, 
we will create this legal fund. We will create the legal fund. And um, the other thing that we are trying to promote as part of the agenda for uh, the Earth Nation, um, this is a plug-in for the women in our groups. We are sponsoring a conference November 20 and 21st, just after the 19th, because in effect we are saying that after we, you know, celebrate, commemorate November 19th, shake up and everything and drink Pelican beer, that the next day the real work begins, November 20, when we define Garifuna Duo and we define the direction we want to take to take back our land. And I end by saying, all you public officers, all you ministers of government, stop selling Garifuna as you have to pay with that lowly Negro. Thanks, man. Yes, ma'am. All right. Over to you.